So today we're going to talk about the dilemma <clears throat> of not knowing if you're being treated badly or if you're being too sensitive. Okay, is the behavior actually reasonable and you are overreacting to it or are you being treated poorly in some objective way and your reaction is reasonable uh, kind of counter uh, response to what's happening. really hard to know because it's not actually objective it's subjective who's to say what bad behavior is it all comes down to each individual's own principles and morals and so on but generally I want to cover it today because reacting poorly to anything is unhelpful so we want no matter whether the behavior is reasonable or not we want to always have the best reaction possible for our own life to that uh, behavior don't we so it can help to know how big the response should be and what direction the response should be and whether it should be assertiveness or compassion and so on to get the best possible life for ourselves. So I've had a number of clients, uh, nice guy clients in particular, I'm thinking of one, but I've had quite a few, who seem to think that almost everyone that they interact with is a bully or a narcissist or toxic. You know, every one of their exes was toxic. Every bully, uh, every boss they've ever had is a narcissist or a bully. Every every one of their family members is narcissistic, and it's hard to tell if what they're telling me is accurate or if it's a skewed perception. If I were to meet these people, would I also think that they were toxic narcissists, or would I just think they're a bit aggressive, or they were just a bit dickish, but actually just pretty regular folk. It's really hard to say because I only, you know, when I work with one person, as opposed to say when I work with couples, I only get one side of the story. And it's really interesting, especially with couple work, when I meet the first person, I'm like, oh my god, your partner sounds awful. And then I meet the partner, I'm like, oh, the, my guy sounds awful. Oh, you both have a very negative view of each other, but you're actually probably both inaccurate. You're probably both quite regular, reasonable humans, just you're know, bouncing off each other and you've come to really negative and quite unreasonable assumptions about each other conclusions so I want to start by saying let's address the word narcissist which just gets thrown around all the time these days okay now narcissist is a technical psychological term all right it's not just a random word and it is a short for narcissistic personality disorder and can also be used as describing a trait that appears in other disorders like antisocial personality disorder. Now, NPD and APD are basically fancy terms for psychopathy. Now, we don't call people psychopaths in formal psychological literature very often because it's not really a label. Okay, it's not a label that they really use, but they talk about people being psychopathic and narcissistic and antisocial personalities are psychopathic. Now these are incredibly rare, okay, it's estimated, because it's hard to measure, but it's estimated that less than 3% of the population are psychopathic enough to qualify as having these disorders, okay, to qualify as being labelled as a psychopath or a sociopath. So whenever you're dealing with someone who appears to be a bully or appears to be toxic or appears to be a narcissist, the most likely thing is you're not actually dealing with a narcissist. Is you're just dealing with someone who's difficult. Or at least you find them difficult. Or they might be that lots of people find them difficult, but they still don't meet the criteria for having a personality disorder. For being psychopathic. You know, the kind of purebred psychopath that has no conscience, no empathy for others. Is all, you know, strategy and gears and no love. Those people are incredibly rare. That being said, even though they're rare, they do like a specific type of target and a specific type of victim. So somebody who has problems with one will often find another one and then another one. They just seem to have like a conveyor belt of, uh, conveyor belt of psychopaths in their life. And that does happen because psychopaths do not choose their victims at random. They're actually very, very intuitive very good at reading people and they know what they like and they know what they're going for and they're going for quite usually quite uh, common personality types so most psychopaths like victim type people 
You know, you're already a victim before a psychopath chooses you. Uh, they're not going to choose someone who's going to fight back. They don't want, like, a difficult challenge. Psychopaths, in my experience from working with criminals, are, above all things, quite lazy. And I don't mean they're not ambitious or hardworking, but they don't like a challenge. They just want to win all the time. They hate losing. They don't get anything from it. They don't feel any benefit from losing. They only see losing as a failure, and then they try their best to win. And they, they're quite happy to just win all the time. They never get uh, sick of that. So they choose the easiest victims. Now, that is a bit of a uh, slap in the face, perhaps, to some of you who are on the conveyor belt, who are getting the non-stop psychopaths in your life. You know, it says a lot about you. Okay, you're not being chosen at random. You're not unlucky. You're attractive to these people. But like I said, they're incredibly rare. And most people who appear to be like this are actually not. They're people who are capable of love. There are people who are capable of change and compassion. They're people who could behave a lot better if they just had the right coaching or the, the person responded in the way that, you know, works really well with them. One of the things that prompted me to do the video now is lately I've been watching a bit of Kitchen Nightmares with Gordon Ramsay. And it seems like at the start of every one of those programs that the, you know, the owner of the restaurant or the chef quite often that he's going to help is narcissistic. You know, they're like, my food's the best. I don't give a fuck what Gordon thinks. They're all like that, nearly all of them. Anyway, they seem like impossible people. They seem really grandiose, really stuck up, really kind of, uh, what a lot of people, if they're with someone like that, they'll call them a narcissist. Sometimes, um, you know, the servers and other staff at the restaurant say, oh, they're narcissists or whatever. But then basically Gordon tells them off, they break down crying, and you see the real person come out. And it was all a front. That narcissistic type behavior was all a defense mechanism because deep down they were scared and afraid, you know, and, and, and sad and ashamed of themselves and all these things that psychopaths don't feel. And it was just an act. It was just they were trying to protect themselves with this, like, bluff exterior. But then they're not narcissists. They're just behaving poorly, which all humans are capable of doing. So the reason I want to put this out today is because nice guys in particular are very sensitive to disagreeable behavior. We're sensitive to conflict. We're sensitive uh, to assertiveness. Aggression, of course. We're sensitive to authority or people trying to take authority over us. We're actually very anti-authority which is one of the weird ironic things about nice guys. Like, we want to please everyone, but we hate being told what to do. It leaves us in a position where it's really hard for us to please people if they tell us how to. Um, but we're more, much more sensitive to disagreeableness than a non-nice guy would be. We, we're hurt by it. We see it as bad and wrong. And so it becomes difficult for us to distinguish somebody just being merely disagreeable, even in a healthy way, from someone actually being narcissistic, or being a narcissist, or a bully, or toxic. See, when I use words like narcissist, I'm referring to the personality disorder. When I use words like bully and toxic, I'm referring to a personality type. We're talking about people who are like this all the time with nearly everyone. People who, that's their default setting. That's, you know, if you strip away, that's their authentic self. You know, a toxic person will always be toxic. They'll always be at the center of chaos and the center of uh, misery. A bully will always get their highs from hurting other people. And, you know, no matter how they ended up being that bully, you know, it's like they're not just sometimes a bit of a dick. Like, this is their programming. Now, the thing is, I've got to point out, narcissists and bullies, generally, like, they choose one target. And everyone else thinks they're awesome. It's very rare that somebody's a dick to everyone. And in fact, that's usually not a personality disorder. That's usually just someone who's very authentic and they're in the wrong group, you know. Uh, and everyone doesn't like them. But somebody who, like, targets someone and destroys them, that's narcissism, right? And everybody else will, you know, part of the Machiavellian strategy that they employ is they try to convince everyone else that they're a good person so that if the victim ever goes for help, nobody will believe them. It's the same thing that, you know, I used to work with pedophiles, the same strategy is they're the best person in the world to everybody else. So if the kid ever tells on them, nobody will believe the kid. It's part of their strategy. Again, these are very rare people. There's hardly any of them out there. 
But nice guys, we're, we're likely to jump to quite extreme conclusions about people just because they're disagreeable, just because we're uncomfortable around them, uh, just because, you know, they're, they're often in conflict or assertive or they don't seem to like us very much or, you know, they've always got negative feedback or whatever. We tend to think, well, they're always like that with me, so they're the problem. And it's not that you're wrong. It's that you just can't be sure. It's that you're going to feel very sure. A lot of my clients who say this, like, my boss is definitely a narcissist, you know, my mum's a bully, you know, my wife is toxic. I'm like, dude, it seems like you've got a lot of toxic people in your life. That's some bad luck, isn't it? So either... You are one of those people who attract this kind of personality and are attracted to this kind of personality. Or you're being a bit unfair in your judgment of people. You're being a bit oversensitive to just normal disagreeableness. And not everyone, you know, says what they have to say well. You know, half the reason I'm in work is because even the best people and the kindest people aren't good at communicating. So sometimes when people disagree with you, it comes out as insults, or it comes out as accusations, or it comes out as like dis defensive rants that feel really like unreasonable. It doesn't mean they're a narcissist, it just means they're not very good at expressing themselves. I think you might understand what that feels like, right? So I want you to actually be able to identify a true narcissist, an actual personality disordered, toxic person. I'm not saying everyone with personality disorders is toxic, but the ones who are. I want you to be able to identify that and not think everybody is that and therefore overlook potential good connections or at least connections you could handle a lot better because they're not actually bad people, so to speak. One of the things you've got to understand, regardless of anything else, is if there's a pattern, then you're the problem. All right? This is one of my biggest wake-up calls I ever had in my life. I was like, man, why do I always have these crazy girlfriends? I've talked about this before. Like, one, two, three, four, five in a row. Crazy-ass girlfriends. Why? And I thought it was like bad luck, bad timing, something. I'm like, no, no, no. Who's the one guy in all of those relationships? Who's the guy who's attracted to women like that? Who's the guy who insists on creating a relationship with a woman like that instead of running away from them? This guy. Right? It had to be me. The problem had to be me. I mean, these were... I had like five girlfriends in a row who were all crazy. And they were all from completely different social circles. Because I was quite spread out. You know, so there'd be one from... One of the bands that I was in. Another from... Another one of the bands that I was in. And then one from my, like, high school group. And then one from my other group. Like, these, these weren't connected. I wasn't, like, pulling from the bad pool. I was pulling the crazy people out of the crowd. This was not random. So the pattern is this, either you choose bad people or bad places to be, you know, you know, toxic or unhealthy people tend to congregate. So you might be, say, in a, like a workplace that's toxic and therefore everyone there is kind of, you know, gone poisonous. Uh, or you choose bad people, you're attracted to narcissistic personalities, you know, your nice guy syndrome is like a perfect foil for users and abusers. So you're going to be attractive to those types of people like nice guys often are the ones who end up with gold diggers and get crushed in divorces you know that's not a fluke there aren't that many gold diggers really most women aren't like that but you know i, I know of one guy who's been through three he's had three women cut him in half and they were definitely doing it like as a strategy like they did all the timing and they had all the legal stuff sorted so that's not bad luck that's him finding a very specific type of woman if you went through how he found that woman and what type of woman he was attracted to. I'm like, yeah, you're finding them, dude. Like, you're better at finding them than a fucking psychologist would be. Like, you're like the master narcissist hunter. This is your fault, brother. Shit. So you either got a pattern of choosing people or going to places where those people are, like, high density. Or the pattern is that you're sensitive to normal disagreeableness. Too sensitive. When I say too, I'm not judging you. What I mean is... The sensitivity you have does not help your life. It harms you. So whenever I use the word to, I mean it's harmful. Okay? So being sensitive is not objectively a problem. It's actually a superpower. Like as a coach, I'm very sensitive to the way people feel and their body language and I can guess what they're thinking. It's a very helpful skill. But being sensitive to disagreeableness to the point where it hurts me 
and I'm actually missing out on opportunities and missing out on connections with people and you know dismissing people from my life even though they could be good for me that's too sensitive okay or and this is much less likely the pattern is that you're the cause of the conflict and this is a bad wake-up call for some people it's rare with nice guys that they're actually like the real you know center of the storm but I've worked with uh, especially borderline personalities I've known a few borderline personalities and they have quite often a problem of splitting people they can't help but cause controversy and conflict amongst others it's kind of like a when they're really insecure it's like their desperate way to feel like important like they matter they have an impact on people the kind of person who gossips at the office and causes all these rifts and clicks to form now quite often they're at the center of everything so they have quite chaotic social lives you know their relationships are always torn and there's lots of rifts and lots of people hate them and they get into like big dramas constant drama that's a sign that you've got borderline is you're just always in dramas um so the pattern can be that you're actually the one who provokes regular folk into having dramas um or a more likely one with nice guys is like the way you behave the people pleasing way you behave is so aggravating to people that you bring out the worst in them and that they're all their criticisms and bullying is actually their best attempt to try and stop you being a people pleaser you know they're just not good at communicating or worst case scenario you're doing all of these patterns in which case you can have a very miserable social life but of course, how are you supposed to know which is which? I mean, unless you get a coach like me or something, how are you supposed to get that objective outside perspective as to who's the bad guy kind of thing? Well, there's one way to figure it out, and that is to have confrontations. Now, when you have a confrontation, a powerful confrontation, like following the principles of my book, The Naked Truth, about powerful confrontations, not having a big drama and a big hissy fit at someone or using like covert or passive aggressive techniques or whatever I'm talking about just coming up, up front bold strong saying what you want then going silent good healthy people we'll make a broad category there they respond to this with negotiation and changes in behavior generally if someone's good for you if they're a good fit for you and they're a healthy minded person they see that you've been upset by their behavior whether or not that's reasonable for you to be upset they'll talk to you about it they'll try to adjust you know they'll try to work out some sort of arrangement between the two of you where you're both happy right that's a, just a reasonable response not everyone's capable of doing it especially not on the first time you confront them you might even a great person you know first time you confront them you might get a defensive reaction you see this quite often in Kitchen Nightmares with Gordon Ramsay is uh, the first time he confronts him, the people have a big tantrum. He comes back later that evening, they're like, yeah, sorry about that, you're fucking right. So quite often you have a confrontation with someone, you finally build up the balls to do it, and you're so dismayed by their reaction that you walk away from them forever and you give up and you don't realise, no, you've got to come back and have another one. The first one doesn't count. You've got to come back and go, okay, you've had some room since we first talked, how are you feeling about it now? Most people don't do that follow-up and they miss out so much. What, what uh, narcissists and bullies and toxic people will do is they go into what's called in psychology extinction mode, which is when they see that you're upset and trying to stand up for yourself, they will dial up the bad behavior to try and crush you. Right? So if you go and confront a narcissist on their kind of bullying tactics, they will go into hyper aggressive mode and they will try to make you back down and take it back they'll throw accusations at you and all kinds of different tactics to try and make it your fault and to make you guilty and make you feel unsure of yourself and whatever their bad behavior is before they'll be you know multiplying that by three or four times they'll go into what we call extinction mode like all the way to the death and if you back down then they'll be nice to you and if you keep fighting they'll keep fighting back they'll turn this into a huge thing so if you get that response and no matter how many times you sort of compassionately come back to them and go okay shall we try again 
they just keep doing this extinction thing. They just keep like dialing up the drama and it goes counter accusing and it feels more than just defensiveness. They're attacking you aggressively. That's how you identify you're with someone who, shall we say, at the very least is unhealthy psychologically. And showing the warning signs of being narcissistic, lacking in conscience, lacking in empathy, and un unable to experience guilt or, or compassion. So that's the person you go, okay, fuck this, I'm out. That's when you quit that job if your boss is like this, right? Or uh, you end that relationship or you find a new circle of friends or you say goodbye to that family member forever or whatever. Like that's, you need to see that response and consistently. Let's say it's, I don't know, someone you've known forever, like your brother or something. And you're just like, this is hard for me to judge because so much attachment issues here. You can always go, I'll give it like a month and I'll keep coming back to this issue. Quite often what a narcissist will do for extinction is they'll cut you off. They'll do the rejecting. You know, I'm never speaking to you again. Just because you say, oh, I'm upset by your behavior. And they'll, they'll hold that over you, you know, they'll block you for like six months. And then they'll come back like nothing's wrong or whatever. You know, that's a warning sign of someone who, you don't even need to call them a narcissist, but you do know that they're very psychologically disordered. That's not how a healthy person manages relationships with someone they love. This person's incredibly unhealthy. You don't need to give them a label like bully or toxic. You just need to go, they're not right for me. That's it. I've got one life. I can't spend it with time. I can't spend that time with people like this. Case closed. So don't judge and don't bail out on a person until you've had a go at confronting them directly, until you've been sure that your confrontation was powerful and reasonable and rational, and you're giving them the best possible chance to work with you to develop a respectful relationship, and they didn't just make promises, they actually changed their behavior consistently over time, right? So once, you, once you've seen that, you can go, okay, maybe it's me. Maybe I was too sensitive to what they were doing, or maybe they did behave badly, but it's not like a problem with them. They, they were in a bad place or something, but they're actually a good person, that kind of thinking. And it can actually start a great relationship. So I've actually had a number of relationships start with, it seems the person hates me, and then we turn it around, you know. Anyway, so hopefully that's helpful, because I know some of you watching, who I know personally, uh, feel like you've got nothing but narcissists in your life, and I'd be suspicious that that's true. Especially if they're not everywhere, like they're at your work, they're your family, every partner you have. I'd say it's unlikely that they all are, but it is likely that you're attractive to unhealthy people and attractive to unhealthy people, and you don't confront them properly to figure out whether they're the type who will change or the type who are uh, set in their ways. Now, our next uh, respect group, I don't know when that's going to happen. We don't have active plans for that going to focus on doing this current one um, so it could be quite some time away so if you want personal support from me on becoming more assertive and you know recovering from nice guy to become more confident one-to-one uh, -one coaching is still available I may have a couple of spots in the next couple of weeks opening up so let me know and I'll send you an application form if you're interested in a free session to test that out otherwise I'll see you guys probably next week cheers